Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One taken, uncut. So to kick things off here, just on trading view, looking at XRP as we finally hit this 18 cent mark again. Um, doesn't take a genius just to tell once you can break a trend line um, that is you know somewhat valid. You can kind of play support and resistance. The next guess would be to move towards that 20 cent mark once again, and hopefully kind of you know trend sideways in this region. Now a lot of people have talked about this, Mr. Level Up, for example. I talk with him regularly um you know he's been tracking this day in and day out whether the fractal draws shorter or longer and he's been calling this for a long time i know you know blockchain backer has been calling this for a long time as well love his videos as well and then even uh trading wizard or tory now they can you know read the charts and this has obviously been a long time coming overdue i know people are talking about you know possible fib retracements on the lower level um but simply guys what i want to emphasize is pricing does not matter at all right now you know, I made a tweet the other day just emphasizing, you know, when XRP goes down 10% or it trends sideways for a while, people call it scam, banker's coin, ripple selling, all, all of the typical FUD that you've been hearing for years. And then when XRP goes up 5%, everybody's suddenly so confident in their investment. It's just human psychology, guys. So realize current price means nothing. All right. All I'm waiting for, and it's not a price prediction, you know my beliefs. I've shared them. Whether it's double, triple, or even, you know, $1,000 per XRP, like even, you know, Cryptopolis, Suzy Esoteric, a lot of people in financial markets have said, if we, you know, get the correct dominant market share, anything's possible. All I'm saying is XRP price will move when it is solving a real problem at scale. So when it is sending large value payments and becomes more liquid, it's game time. When will that be? I'm not going to pretend to know an exact date. I believe 2020 is a great, great year. Now is the best time as any. Um, I'll be looking forward to the next few months as well. Things are getting absolutely wild, as we can tell. All right, so let's get into the news briefly. So right here, Real XRP Boy just sharing this. So again, Joel Katz, aka this is David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, and his answer, and I do like this. So just like no one wants to hold the fiat currencies in these Nostro accounts today, but they do. Again, because the typical excuse is no banks, nobody is going to have a custody solution and want to hold XRP. And that's actually silly to even think because rather than holding a basket of 13 different currencies, you can reduce the amount of you know fiat or value you're holding and hold XRP. And that can act for any currency that you need on demand. So I'm just going to kind of read this. He used to be really interactive with Reddit, XRP chat, things of that nature. And yes, David is an absolute genius, you know working on distributed um, systems networks, I guess, uh, back in the day in you know 1988 with the NSA, has a long, long history in portfolio. He can entertain so many different ideas, and I think he's crazy, but in a great way. So I'm just going to read this briefly and get over additional news. So right here, <clears throat> you know what? It's kind of hard to read. All right. Guess I'm better off here. So right here, American Bank, a, oh, I'm just going to uh, read the highlighted because I feel like I've shared this a lot. You know, XRP is a vehicle. Currency is not an investment. It's a replacement for fiat currencies used for that purpose, which aren't really investments either. It's because they're stuck there. They have to hold it there. So again, no one will want to hold XRP, just like nobody wants to hold fiat currencies in these Nostro pre-funded accounts around the globe today, anywhere from $5 trillion to $27 trillion. And they just sit idle. Capital costs, inflation, so many inefficiencies in the system, but they still do hold the fiat currencies often at costs, costs excuse me, of 5% a year or so because it allows them to make quick payments and the assets they hold typically only make them, you know, quick, cheap payments in one corridor. That is absolutely insane and exactly my point that I was making with rather than holding a basket of 13 currencies um, and, you know, some of them, you know, euro and USD are highly liquid. You don't really need the prefund as much, but for the currencies that are hard to reach, for example, you know, Thai bought a lot of currencies in Southeastern Asia or through Latin America. Absolutely. There might not be a connection between the, let's see, uh, the Argentine peso and the rupiah or the rupee, things of that nature. Okay. They want to go to and from with a simple bridge asset instead of going through multiple steps. 
Next up, so this was sent to me over by Vincero Speedwell. Thanks for sending this. And again, this is on the treasury.gov site and just latest news. So this was on March 18th, actually. But this was a statement from Secretary Stephen T. Mnuchin on the establishment of the Money Market Mutual Fund Liquidity Facility. Now, this is a lot bigger than a lot of people realize. Essentially, you know, there's a bunch of conspiracies that go hand in hand with this, guys. You know me. I'm simply just sharing the thoughts and ideas around. Um, I'll believe it until I see it. I know there's been, you know, talk basically saying that Mnuchin here has bankrupted the Federal Reserve entirely. You know, with that, you know, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Chase. I'm sure you guys saw those silly, you know, anonymous websites as well. And, you know, just saying that the market liquidity overall is now controlled by Steve Mnuchin and the entire Treasury Department. I don't know if you guys watch, uh, how do you pronounce his name, Bix Weir on Road to Ruta or, you know, other people as well. I think it's well known that Mnuchin can definitely have his hands dabbled or at least overseas and controls and manipulates the market to some degree. If you think that's crazy, um, I would just implore you to do additional research as well. But uh, basically, one way to look at this is that the Treasury Department right now you know, is kind of dominant. Um, I know there's other conspiracies as well with Bitcoin Ben saying that Ripple somehow consults or will play a role in, you know, the treasury in the future. Who knows? I don't really care, guys. I'm here to make money via XRP. So another take on this is that this also means now that the United States, at least the treasury, owns all central bank requests for credit for all 186 foreign nations. This is potentially a very true power, you know, a power transfer. Um, I, I know it kind of sounds crazy, so we'll just see how all of this continues, but just wanted to share that. All right, next up, Gold Telegraph. So breaking news, Rand Refinery will shut its smelter and significantly scale down its gold refining in South Africa. So we're seeing a lot of other groups, you know, follow suit. We know, you know, the demand is very high for gold and precious metals, but they can't even fulfill it. <clears throat> Excuse me, some of the, you know, mints and even bullion um exchanges and you know suppliers are actually even shut down or just out of stock temporarily so we'll see if this follows suits which could mean that gold silver obviously another sign that they're severely manipulated and undervalued i know for example you know i, I give figures all the time but even greg manorino on the low end said that gold right now should be valued around six thousand dollars per ounce and silver you know five hundred dollars per ounce and i tend to agree i'm even more bullish and as we can see right here, Rand Refinery is one of the world's largest gold refiners, producing between 250 and 280 tons of a refined gold per year. All right, goes hand in hand with Michael Arrington. Again, he is basically the founder of TechCrunch, Crunchbase, and then Arrington XRP Capital. Huge XRP bull. I like this guy. Says it blunt. You know, you know where you stand with him, and I just respect it overall. So right here, and very well connected as well. Insiders in the gold business are explaining to me that there is currently no market clearing price for gold. This is a big deal. Again, if you guys want to pause this and read um, or screenshot this as well, just talking about ABN AMRO, um, AMRO, AMRO, and I talked about them again, a Dutch-based bank basically making everybody liquidate their gold and metal holdings. So crazy things, questions, you know, com you know comics defaults, um, just so many things to kind of lead you to question. A lot of market uncertainty, but where there is uncertainty, there is risk, and where there is risk, there's opportunity to make money. All right, next up, XRP Marshall sharing this. So Brad Garlinghouse, remember his prediction coming to fruition, basically saying that banks will custody digital assets. Look at right here, top Korean or top South Korean bank plans to offer Bitcoin custody. As we can see right here, KB Kukmin, one of the top South Korean lenders, is planning to offer digital currency custody services for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we're going to see this follow suit, remember, back in January as well, about Germany as well. I believe he has a screenshot with this. Yep. And then right here, meanwhile, in Germany, over 40 banks approach the Federal Financial Super or Supervisory Authority, better known as Buffin, B, uh, Bafin, uh, I think it's Buffin, B-A-F-I-N. I've heard it a bunch of times, so I do apologize. But to secure approval to offer Bitcoin custody following the introduction of a new regulatory law in the country. All right. Step by step. Remember, even Miguel Vias said, well, when moon, well, one of the necessary things, of course, is we need liquidity. We need regulation. But then we need to ensure security and custody to hold, you know, the millions, billions and trillions of dollars of tokenized assets in the future. So custody is absolutely a key component that we have to look for. If, you know, there's something really going on with poly sign and liquidity pools and X pool and, you know, things of that nature, we need to know that banks 
banks are holding. There's also tons of talks about financial advisors higher up, at least for now, before it comes down the totem pole, um, that they will be making their own you know, index funds with crypto and digital assets. Banks want to hold digital assets and make products to sell to us. And that's not far-fetched whatsoever. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see something coming you know, like that by end of year. Um, especially in such times of uncertainty, people are going to be looking for other asset classes to invest in. Next, so Spiro, definite follow here. This is at O underscore rips. So boom, XRP. And again, these are just Ripple partners. And when we say XRP, we mean the whole basically, you know, DLT ecosystem, whether it's digital currencies, we're just talking about the internet of value coming into fruition and evolving as a whole. So pay attention to this. The Digital Dollar Foundation unveiled a board of advisors on Thursday naming 22 individuals who will help develop the framework for creating a U.S. CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Now, this is a joint venture between Accenture, which is a Ripple partner. They help with the digital transformation, as I always say, of you know groups like R3, Ripple, Swift, etc., and the Digital Dollar Foundation. And as we look here on Coindesk.com, so again, Chris Giancarlo's Digital Dollar Project names X Treasury CFTC officials to new board. And this was just coming out today, March 26th, 2020. So as we said, they are in partnership with Accenture, has tapped a number of formal government officials and industry experts to boost its advocacy efforts. All right. So as we can see here, guys, I mean, naming 24 individuals who will help develop this framework overall. Um, we can see, you know, who's kind of in cahoots with all of this and working on building this. And this does not just scream XRP. But what I'm saying is this validates it, whether it's fiat or central bank digital currencies. As we know, they still need a bridge asset. So we are happy to encourage the you know adoption of any type of digital money and the coolest thing about this is yes okay we know it's going to be centralized obviously just like any central bank digital currency most likely would be but what is cool is that instead of just electronic money today they will actually have digital wallets and i really want to better understand um you know which proposals will go through 100 percent and how the future of payments will work but i've you know spent hours recently just watching all of the panels and discussions of the imf the bis the world bank discussing central bank digital currencies stable coins you know backed assets talking about these concepts and everyone thinks it's kind of crazy or you know people are great at doing price prediction or not price predictions but future predictions but when you really look at the current ecosystem it's not too crazy. Like two years ago, if you really just did your own research, you could kind of make, you know, conservative estimations or projections on where we would be today. Now, granted, I thought that we were kind of going to use QE to delay this black, black swan event. Um, but again, things are just so uncertain right now. I do not know what the financial landscape will look like in the future. All I can tell you is that it's going to be a lot more digital. In the 08 crisis, crude oil was at what, you know, all time highs. And now we are back down. It's the exact opposite in that regard. But there's also parallels that we can draw. All right. So I'm going to show you this gentleman here, Chris Gian Giancarlo, I believe. So check this out. So this is shared by Status again. So digital dollar is just another walled garden. OK, it's centralized. It's a closed ecosystem and it still needs a bridge asset to interoperate or at least a protocol such as IOP to link the ledgers, the networks together. And again, as we know, IOP is agnostic and XRP is a neutral bridge asset. So listen to this. What is a digital dollar? It is a form of tokenized, digitized fiat currency that enjoys the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. And this gentleman is the former chairman of the CFTC. And I finally memorized, I always mix them up with, um, you know, uh, what is his name? Jay Clayton, Jerome Powell, uh, who else? There's there's so many other guys I know, but I always have to re-double check whether it's the SEC or, you know, the Fed or et cetera. Geek is, well, the dollar is already digitized, right? You know, well, the dollar is already digitized. electronic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so explain, explain the difference. Yeah, so, so I use the difference. What I mean by electronic is, yeah, we have a, we, it's still an account space system. You know, most money is basically exists by recording on bank ledgers. And if the bank goes down or the other intermediary goes down, try getting your money, right? Well, of course, we have insurance for that, but it's not the same thing as getting your money. It's electronic. It, it exists on bank, uh, bank electronic ledgers, but that's not fiat. That's not the same thing as a hundred dollar bill in your pocket or a hundred dollars of digital fiat in your wallet. And so what we're talking about is a form of, of tokenized, digitized fiat currency that enjoys 
the full faith and credit of the U.S. government that is legal tender, both uh, in, 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 a, in a virtual online uh, uh, commercial uh, marketplace. All right, exactly. And if you guys have not seen one of the earlier videos uh, released towards the end of 2019 of David Schwartz releasing this, this is basically talking about stable coins and building different you know tokens on the XRP ledger. Highly recommend watching that. Now, I'm not saying that is what the USD coin will be. Um, what I'm saying is, regardless of walled gardens, they still need bridge assets. They need need an ecosystem and they need a protocol to transfer the value. We know that, you know, Ethereum has scalability issues, but they can be solved by going on the XRP ledger as well to some degree. All right. Now, just like we said, remember how high the stock market was coming up this week with all of the QE, QE infinity. Um, and essentially the only thing that could really drive the gold standard, this whole talk is that if QE basically goes towards infinity, that's one of the best things to drive us towards a, you know, more driving us back towards backing our money towards something and especially something as physical and tangible as gold and silver. All right. And again, we are down on the down 900 points as of making this video. Time and time again, you guys can kind of easily predict what is going to occur. I'm not trying to short this market. I think it's a fool's errand. Um, I don't feel like losing anymore, um, especially, you know, in the stock game. I'm simply just, you know, buying, accumulating, holding because in times of such volatility, yes, there's chance to make money. But I think that I will do better off at this point after trading for quite a while on simply holding because I value XRP as digital gold in the future. It's going to be pretty entertaining, guys, in the future um, for all the people and all the bandwagon investors that come right back when XRP starts approaching the 2017 prices, you know, passing a dollar again, passing three dollars. They'll come flooding in when, you know, we've done a research. We know where this ecosystem is going. I am here for the long haul. So with that, guys, I appreciate you all as always. Remember to check the links in the description. We have the tax-free crypto Roth IRAs. I was talking about this before this economic crash and this black swan event of the national emergency. I was talking about this before the pandemic. Recommending that. Again, we have exchanges and we have cold wallets. And if you don't want to spend the money for a cold wallet, there are free alternatives as well to diversify your holdings. Just Google how to do, you know make a paper wallet. When I do storage for any type of crypto and you're a paper wallet or Ledger Nano, it doesn't matter. Both are secure provided you, the human error component, keep it secure and do not take a picture of your password. You keep it off. You know, you keep it in cold storage. You keep it hidden. You know, you don't have anything tracing back to you electronically. All right. So Google it. You can test it sending 25 XRP. And then if it works and you can send it back and vice versa, you should be good to go. And then you can send the bulk of it there and store it. And also, guys, shout out to all my channel members as well. Top channel members, Jamie XRP and all the others. If you want to be named as well, just let me know. Um, appreciate you all as always. Have a great weekend. And until next time.